This is Gary Stocker. Let's take a few minutes to learn about a career in medical laboratory science. There are three areas I want to focus on in terms of the career opportunity. The first is the need. And as we record this in 2020, there are many, many, many opportunities for clinical medical lab professionals throughout the country. And that demand won't end anytime soon. The education. There are two routes that can be generally taken to get the degree requirements required to work in a medical laboratory. The first is one called a Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Science. It's a four-year program. The second is an associate's degree program in a similar topic, medical laboratory science, medical laboratory technology, something like that is what it can be called. And then finally is the career. And medical laboratory professionals can work in hospital labs. Uh, there are three shifts typically, day, evenings, and nights. Uh, reference labs, which are off-site from hospitals and big locations that do just routine and specialty testing for patients. Uh, research labs, and even the manufacturers that make the automation, the reagents, the technologies used in the medical laboratory. There are some basic routes you can take to a career in medical laboratory science. The first is something called a 3 plus 1, which is the traditional route, going right to college out of high school, taking about 90 college credits in general education, sciences, math, and then what's typically a six to 12 month internship in an actual medical laboratory, learning the skills in chemistry, hematology, micro microbiology, blood bank, and others. The other one is more of a second bachelor's degree. It's called a four plus one. And typically that route is you get a bachelor's degree. And typically that's a bachelor of science in chemistry, a bachelor of science in biology, maybe physics, maybe some other sciences as well. And then you identify an organization, either a college provider or a healthcare organization, that provides you with a 12-month internship, it can be from six to 12 months, to get those clinical skills, again, in chemistry, microbiology, blood bank, hematology, and other areas. The associate's degree is similar training, but not in the same depth, and is a two-year program. The first year in a community college that has the program is just some general education and some science courses, and the second year is a combination of medical laboratory courses plus an internship in a hospital or reference lab. So let's quickly look at some of the areas, some of the disciplines in the medical laboratory. And the first one is chemistry. And that's really the study of components in your blood. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like here in a minute. And it's tests like sodium and cholesterol, uh, troponin, which is, which is a heart attack indicator, uh, testing for liver and kidney diseases, and other tests, most of which are performed on large automated systems that I'll show you a picture of here in a second. Medical laboratory scientists monitor these results for quality and consistency. And here's an example of a fully automated chemistry lab. And as you look through, there are four or five sets of automated chemistry analyzers that do all the kinds of tests you see on the right-hand side of the screen. Tests such as beta, uh, human chorionic gonadotropin, which is a measure for pregnancy, troponin, which is a heart, heart attack indicator, electrolytes, which are sodium, potassium, chloride, CO2, and you can see the rest of the list. If you look in the bottom left of the screen, you'll see kind of how chemistry tests are separated from a patient's blood. At the bottom of that image is reflects red blood cells, and the top golden yellow part is plasma, sometimes also known as serum, that's used to test for the kind of chemistry analytes you see on the right-hand side. Hematology. Effectively, hematology is the study of cells. And you can see a couple of examples on the screen itself. And it's counting of white cells and red blood cells and platelets and other components. It's looking at these cells to look at the morphology. What's in them? What kind of cells are they? Uh, associated typically with blood diseases. Leukemia is the best example. You can see on the bottom left portion of the screen, a relatively typical collection of white blood cells, kind of in the purple colors. Uh, and later on, I'll show you how to dif quickly differentiate some of these. On the bottom right portion of the screen is a, a similar image of a patient with a serious health problem. Uh, you can notice the size differences between some of the blood cells, some of the white blood cells, and the other cells. And you learn how to differentiate normal white blood cells, more like you see on the left, with abnormal blood cells, more like you see on the right. 
Here's an image of a hematology analyzer. And on the far right hand side of that, the specimens are put on uh, the analyzer. They run from right to left. And one of the things that happens is a patient's blood specimen is put on a microscope slide automatically. And you can see in the bottom section, it's just images of white blood cells. So the computers identify them much quicker than humans and be able to look at these on a computer screen instead of a microscope. Microbiology is a study of microorganisms, including bacteria, fungus, viruses, and parasites. Microbiology can be used to identify the bacteria causing many diseases. Some common examples are strep for sore, for sore throats, uh, wound infections, um, and in microbiology also learn how to identify the antibiotics and the concentration of the antibiotics that will eliminate infections. And in this slide you see a couple of examples. On the left hand side, uh, in the, in the uh, top it says gonococci, gonococcus, and these are examples of Neisseria gonorrhea. And if you look closely at those, you can kind of see there's little two little bubbles kind of touching to each other. And then on the right hand side is an agar plate. You may have seen those in some of your high school or other classes. And the way bacteria grows, their color, their smell, uh, their morphology on these kind of plates can give you an indication of what kind of bacteria are present. Blood bank, also known as transfusion services, provides the patients and their physicians and nurses with blood types, uh, with units of blood to cross match for either disease or trauma. Uh, other, other types of blood products include platelets, uh, fresh frozen plasma, and things like that. Pathology and histology is a different direction for medical laboratory scientists to go. And they're also, uh, those trained in that area are also called histotechs or histotechnologists. And they learn how to take tissue parts that are dissected and cut by a pathologist and prepare them and stain them for pathologists to read to identify normal or abnormal tissue results in patients. It's just a branch of the medical laboratory that's also worth consideration and also for which there is a strong demand today and will be in the coming years for this skill set. Let's talk about the career and the compensation. And again, as we do this video in 2020, uh, you can see that an MLT, the Associate Degree Program, provides compensation in the city of forty to $50,000 per year as a base. That bachelor's degree in medical laboratory science, somewhere in the vicinity of fifty to $60,000 per year as a base. You'll also note in hospitals particularly, that shift differential can add additional five to $10,000 in compensation for those that work on non-bankers hours, day shift hours, those that work evening shifts or night shifts. And lastly, a couple quick images to give you a better feel for what the profession is like. Top left, you can see a patient being stuck for blood. It's one of the skills most, if not all, medical laboratory scientists learn as part of their training. Uh, on the top right, I've identified some types of cells, uh, lymphocyte, a segmented neutrophil called SEGS, a band neutrophil. And if you look at them, you can see the SEGS kind of have little small segments between the main parts of the white blood cell nucleus, the band, kind of a thicker, fatter one, and then a blast, somewhat difficult to tell, difficult to tell but kind of no segmentation at all in the nucleus, just kind of one big nucleus there in the middle. Uh, bottom left is what happens when yours and my blood is donated. It's separated into red cells that you can see on the back side and plasma on the front side that includes platelets and other sorts of components in that yellow goldish plasma as well. And again, we talked about on the bottom right. And again, we talked on the bottom right. This is an agar plate with a specific kind of morphology. And lastly, next steps. Uh, get more information about what we talked about today at the website shown. It's mls2030.com. And if you have some specific questions you would like to address about the career and the education required, you can email me at the address you see at the bottom of the screen.